plastics. For the exam, you will need to know about the range of plastics available, along with their general properties and their characteristics. You should also be familiar with the more popular methods of manufacturing and the role of a variety of adhesives in a successful manufacture and use of products, as well as other additives that can be used to improve their performance. So what are plastics? Plastics are long chain molecules. They consist of hydrogen and carbon atoms in various combinations, along with other atoms. Where do they come from? Well, there's two main sources of plastics, or polymers as they are also known. They either come from animal and vegetable sources, such as cellulose, that comes from plant fibres that can be used in food packaging, OHP slides, etc. Or they can come from natural sources, such as crude oil. The downside of this type is that their sources are running out so eventually there will be no fossil fuels that are used to create these plastics so we will have to turn to, to animal and plant sources. Plastics can be divided into three main types. Thermoplastics, these materials can be repeatedly reheated and remoulded. Or thermosets, or thermosetting as they're also called, and these undergo a chemical change resulting in them becoming permanently rigid and they cannot be reheated or reshaped. And the third group is elastomers. Elastomers aren't really plastics because they are a natural source uh, such as a rubber and they have good elasticity and they can be distorted under pressure and they will return to their original shape once the pressure is removed. So for the exam you'll need to learn what an actual plastic looks like under a microscope. So these cross-linked chains are uh, the drawings from the textbook. So thermoplastics look like wiggly worms, thermosets look like loads of ladders crossing over and these are the cross-linked chains that stop them from distorting under pressure. And the last group are the elastomers which looks like loads of wiggly W's and these show the cross-links that can be stretched under pressure and they return back to their natural state. You'll need to know about the properties of plastics. Plastics have good electrical and thermal insulation. They have a good strength to weight ratio, which means they do not, um, they, they're strong materials, but um, because they're usually lightweight, their ratio of strength to lightweight is usually really, really good compared to their uh, strength. Um, and generally, they have good atmospheric and chemical corrosion resistance. So, common plastics you need to know. First of all, there's so many plastics, you've just got to learn. Uh, the most common ones and sometimes you don't even need to learn their name you can just learn their abbreviation because in an exam they would accept it for example ABS this has high impact strength and has really good toughness and good strength and scratch resistance it's also very lightweight and for that reason it's used in safety helmets car bumpers PC cases toys etc another one is nylon nylon is really hard and tough and resists wear uh, it doesn't mind friction and for that reason it's often used to create bearings, gears, curtain rail fittings and clothing. E or polypropylene is lightweight, it's food safe, has good impact resistance and actually moves around and flexes quite well and for that reason we use it in ki kitchen products such as food containers and if you look at the bottom of your lunchbox you'll see a small PP or a number 5 which relates to polypropylene. It's also used to make string and rope and for those of you who have done life-saving life swimming lessons and you throw the rope out to the person who's pretending to drown the rope that sits on the surface of the water is polypropylene because it's lighter than water and also polypropylene is the polyprop chair the old-fashioned school chair designed by Robin Day uh, it's the most sold chair of all time um, and if you look at the bottom of it you'll see a date mark um, and most of the ones in the school are from the 70s and 80s um, so the polypropylene chair. The next one is hips or high impact polystyrene. This has good impact resistance, good strength and stiffness and we use it for toys and refrigerator linings. So you've seen the vacuum forming videos where they side of a fridge to include the little shelves. They use hips. We also use that as the clear plastic on our vacuum former. Polystyrene. Polystyrene comes in two different types. You've got the expanded polystyrene which is where they've pumped air into the, into the plastic and it blows up into loads of little bubbles and we use that in packaging so when you go and buy something from Curry's or Dixon's 
and it's electrical product and it's protected by that white plastic that is expanded polystyrene the next one is the sheet form um, and that's the same that's used in disposable plastic cups from the vending machine it hasn't got the air pumped through it but it's still lightweight and fairly rigid um, but it's not very strong not very strong at all the next two are the LDPE and HDPE LDPE or low density polythene has a low density and low stiffness and we use it in uh, washing up liquid bottles toys and carrier bags and HDPE is high density it has good density good stiffness good chemical resistance and we use it in beer crates uh, plastic bottles buckets and bowls so we want a little bit of flex to it but actually we want that strength um, a few more uh, PC this is polycarbonate and PC you see it think PC police constable police riot shields so when you see uh, on the news riots in London and you see them protect themselves with the riot shield